Hi, it's Peter here from Tips and Tricks HQ. In this WordPress tutorial, I'll give you a basic introduction to Firebug and how you can use this tool to make changes to your WordPress site's styling, structure and overall display. As an example, we'll make some simple changes to the 2011 theme where we'll go from this standard look to a slightly modified and more colourful look such as this. Whenever you view a WordPress site in your browser, the look and layout of most of what you see is controlled by something known as a cascading style sheet, or CSS for short. This is done with some code which is saved in a CSS file, which is usually separate from the files containing the content of your WordPress site. Most WordPress themes have their own cascading style sheet, which lives in the themes folder, and is called style.css. Here's an example for the 2011 theme. Now I've already FTP'd this file across from my host to my computer and I've opened the CSS file with a code editor to show you what a typical custom style sheet looks like. Now as we can see it contains a whole bunch of code which refers to various parts of the theme's pages and elements. Now don't be too put off if you think this code looks too complicated because I'll show you a fairly easy way to figure out how to modify this code using Firebug which is a great tool for investigating CSS on any page. So let's get started. The first thing you'll need is a Firefox browser and once you have your Firefox browser you can get the Firebug add-on by simply going to Tools and then clicking on Add-ons and then searching for Firebug in the search box and then once Firebug is displayed in the search results click on install to install the, uh, the add-on into your browser and once Firebug has been installed you'll have to restart your browser by clicking on the restart now link OK, so now we have Firebug installed, let's see how we can use it to modify our 2011 website. Before I go on, I want to point out that if you prefer to use the Chrome browser, there is a similar tool almost identical to Firebug, which is already built into the Chrome browser, and the concepts in this tutorial also apply for that too. So let's start making some styling changes to our blog step by step. The first thing we want to do is change the colour of the background portions from this greyish colour to a darker red colour. So to find out how to do that, let's invoke Firebug by placing our mouse pointer over the section we're interested in and then right clicking and selecting Inspect Element. As we can see the Firebug window pops up and it shows some HTML code and the values of the HTML elements in the right hand box. Now we need to figure out which element we must change in order to modify the background color from the grey to the red. So let's look at our right hand box and as we can see we have an element called body with a background tag and if we hover over the color code which is E2, 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 if we see that it's this gray color so this must be the element that we're interested in. Now to change the color we'll click on this code and delete the color code and add our own and as we can see immediately our changes have been reflected in the browser. Now the beauty of Firebug is that we can make whatever changes we wish on any live web page and the changes are only temporary and can only be seen by us in our current browser session. So for instance if we refresh our browser which we'll do just now we see that our changes are lost upon refreshing the browser. So now that we feel a bit more confident let's carry on. So we'll put our changes back for the red background color. So now that we're happy with this particular change, we'll start editing our style.css file as we go along. So as we can see, this part of the code 
can be found on line 322 of the style.css file. So we'll simply go to our code editor and we'll go to line 322 and in here we'll make the same change. In other words, we'll put the particular color code for our color in this file. So for our, in our case that was 7A1616 and we'll save this file for now. So now let's go back and make some more changes. So next we want to decrease the size of the space above and below the title. So once again we'll need to figure out which elements or element we need to change to do this. Now a useful thing to use in Firebug is a thing called the selector tool which is this here. So let's click on it and we can use this to hover over particular elements in the web page to see whether that's the element we're interested in. So in this first case we've hovered over just above the title and if we look in the right hand box of the Firebug window we can see that we have something there which specifies margins and padding. So let's just click on this and modify some of this code to see whether it has the desired effect that we want to change. So let's change the first element in, uh, in the padding property. We'll change the first value to 15 pixels. So we'll enter 15px and as we can see our change has been reflected in the browser. We're happy with this change. Once again we'll make this change to our CSS file. First we'll see what line this change was in and as we can see the, the uh, change is on line 509 in the style.css file. So let's go to our code editor and let's go to line 509 and remember the change that we made was in the padding variable so we'll delete this and we'll add in 1.5 pixels and we'll save the file for now. Now let's go back and continue with our changes. If you want to learn about or dig deeper into CSS then a very useful website is w3schools.com here you can find information about any property or facet of CSS or HTML. For instance, here's some information about the padding property we just modified. As you start doing more and more work with CSS, the more knowledgeable and comfortable you'll become with it. So the next change we want to make is we also want to decrease the size of the padding or the space be, uh, underneath the description of the blog. So once again, let's try our selector tool. So we'll click on it and we'll see what sort of elements there might be around that area that we can use to make a change. So we might want to try this particular element. So let's click on it and look in our style window which is the right hand box of the firebug window and we can see there that they have a margin property so let's try changing that value so in the margin property to change the value that affects the set the size of the bottom section it's the second last value so we'll change that to 15px which is 15 pixels and as we can see our change has been reflected in the browser so if we're happy with this change once again we'll go back to our we'll put this uh, change in our style.css file like we did before so this particular change will have to be on line 525 and we'll change we'll make the same change there so we'll put 15 pixels once again we'll save our file and let's continue with our changes 
So we're back at our window and we can see that our previous changes have affected the placement of the search box. So let's fix that and move the search box slightly further up the window. So once again, let's go to our trusty selector tool and hover around until we think that we have the element we want. So that seems to have highlighted the search box. So let's click on that. And if we look on the right hand side, we're looking for anything that might give us a positioning type property. And we can see a float right and a width. But it doesn't look like something that tells us about the positioning, uh, exact positioning. So what we'll do now is go back to our left hand window and move up slightly in the hierarchy. So as we can see, if we go up to the slightly further up of this hierarchy and click on the form ID, which is the search form. So we'll click on that. And now look back on our right hand side. We can see that we have a positioning element there that we can change. So let's try changing the right positioning value. And we'll change that into the units of pixels. So let's try 10px and as we can see that's moved our search box slightly to the right so that doesn't look too bad now we want to move the search box slightly further up the page and if we look further down we can see that there's a top value there so what we'll do is we'll do something similar we'll click on that and let's try the value of say 10 pixels and that looks like it's probably about probably too far up maybe we might want to move it further down so let's try 20 maybe a bit more further down let's try 30 I think that looks just about right so if we're happy with this change once again let's note the line that this these changes need to be made so they're on line 623 we'll make the same changes so remember we change the right property to 10 pixels and we also want to change the top property to 30 pixels.